A Punnett square is a square form chart that is likely a turnout for what your offspring would end up with. The character predicts what they have. So in this case, this is the blue eyes, and these are blue eyes. Blue eyes has a capital B, but they had blue eyes too. So B, 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 B. As you can see, B, you go over, and that lines up with that B, so you put B and B. Here, you do the same thing, but here, you go B, B, again. But since this is blue and it's capital, it's more dominant, you put the B over the recessive blue eyes. Geno and phenotype are kind of the same thing, but they're really different. A genotype is gene characteristics like diabetes or heart disease, anything within the blood. So any disease, cancer, any of that. Phenotype, although, is physical characteristics. Like, some people may have long torsos than their bodies. Some may have bigger legs, some may have shorter arms, but it's all from the parents of them. It's their face shape and their eyes and their ears, unattached or attached. It's all things physical about their appearance. It's phenotype. Pheno, physical. Geno, gene. G, gene, physical. They line up with each other. An allele are the letters in the heterozygous and the homozygous. It's the big letter or the little letter. Here we have a capital I and a lowercase I. Lowercase, lowercase. Capital, capital. Basically, each one is an allele. So this capital I is one allele, and this lowercase I is one allele. These both are lowercase, but each lowercase letter is an allele. So they're separate. They're separate alleles. So this would be alleles, plural. But this would be allele, singular. Homozygous means the same. Homo means the same. So recessive and dominant means that one's recessive and one's dominant, basically. But the letters are the same. Each allele is the same. It's either both alleles are capitalized or both alleles are undercased. But they're the same as in homozygous. So a homozygous dominant would be this. Because dominant means that there are more bigger characteristics that would carry on to their offspring. So dominant means the big letters because, you know, dominant is the stronger. So stronger is mainly bigger. Bigger letters means dominant. Alright, and recessive homozygous is the lowercase letters. They're opposite from dominant. It means recessive are what something could have happened with the parents' parents or the parents' parents' parents, which still is in their genes and what they still can occur in their offspring. Heterozygous is basically the opposite of homozygous. Homozygous means both are the same. Both alleles are the same. Both are either capitalized or both are either lowercase. Heterozygous means one allele is capitalized and the other allele is lowercase. So here we have a capital I and a lowercase i. But the capital letter will always become first because it's more dominant. The lowercase will always be recessive and will come second. So this I is dominant and this one is recessive. Heterozygous, one different. They're different from each other. Either capital M, lowercase m, capital Z, lowercase z, any letter, but they're different. There's only one combination, and that's capital and a lowercase. A carrier is when one of the individuals, a mother or a father, carries a disease or genetic mutation with them. That doesn't mean they're fully affected by it, but means they have it in their system, which they can pass on to their children. So in this first diagram here, it shows that the father is a carrier of some type of disease, which we do not know, and the mother is a non-carrier. So they're saying that these two children could possibly be, be another carrier of the dad's disease that he is infected. Not really infected, but he is carrying, as the word carrier. And they're saying that these two children could be a non-carrier, as the mom is too. But really, all these could be a non-carrier, all these could be a carrier. It just depends on what happens when they mix. <laughs> Alright, in this diagram here, we're showing that the mom and the father both are a carrier of the disease. So what they're showing is their offspring could have one that could be fully diseased. That is just fully diseased, that is diagnosed with it, and is just fully carrying on the disease. This one could be showing, these two are showing that they're, they're also a carrier of the disease, but they're not fully infected. And it's showing that this last one right here is not carrying the disease at all. It is not a carrier. It's not affected any so how 
by the disease. Being a carry means you carry a genetic mutation or a disease of some sort like diabetes, heart disease, any heart problems, any any disease, cancer, anything. It means you either carry your or you're fully affected by what your parents have given you. And a carrier would also always be a recessive trait. Because if it was a dominant trait, then it would be passed on. So there would be more fully affected ones. But since it's a recessive trait, there's less. Because recessive is less showing up than dominant. A pedigree chart, by my understanding, is not a dog chart of somehow. A pedigree chart is basically, it shows the steps and the generations of what was being carried or the, the genotypes that were carrying or the phenotypes, the characteristics of what is being carried by ancestors above them. So right here we have generation one. So these are the parents that started all of this. So here you can see the dad has a recessive trait and the mom is all dominant. And here, it goes down, so this is a full, this one carries it fully, and this has a recessive trait. And this one, on the mom's side, it means it has a recessive trait, and this is fully dominant, which carries after their mom. The woman, or the females, are always circles, and the males are squares. And then, so, this is generation two. And in generation three, the kids they had... These ones are fully affected by the disease that the dad right here carried. So their disease is not to blame them, but to blame them. But most likely to blame the ones before them. Which cannot happen because it's not shown in this chart. And the mom, since she had offspring with this guy, this one had recessive, which she then had offspring with this male. And since she was a recessive trait from... Her dad's disease or genetic mutation was given to their daughter. And on this side, their son with theirs had offspring with this lady that also had a disease, but that was fully, she was fully diagnosed with it and she wasn't a carrier of it. So they then had offspring and their both of their offsprings were fully affected with their disease. So these letters here are showing that this is heterozygous and she is homozygous. And so homozygous means it's full on, full on. But this is recessive because it's lowercase. And here, these here are dominant because they're full on and they're capitalized. So it means they have full on, they have the full on disease. And here they don't have no disease, so it's lowercase. But they're still clean from disease, so they're recessive. And these guys that are carriers of the disease are heterozygous because they have a capital and a lowercase. But that means they're only like a carrier of it. So they're partly clean and partly diseased is how I remember it. In this part of square that we had to finish, it shows purple is dominant, capital P, white is recessive, lowercase p. A capital P... P, father, and a capital P, P, mother. So, as you can see, that I put the two capital P's at the top, but the two capital P's on the side, because it says both are capital P's. So, I put the capital P here and the capital P here. So, you go over to this square, and you go up, like a graph. So, this is capital P, so you know that capital P's going to be in the front. So, you have that capital P, and you put that one next to that P. So, you have... Two capital P's. And that's the same with everyone because these are two capital P's, two capital P's filling in this chart together. And so in D, it says, What colors are the parents? So the parents are going to be all purple because they are both capital P's. And it says, it states in A that purple is dominant. And right here, it says it's a capital P. So purple is dominant and they're both capital P's. So they are full out purple. Then the E, it says what colors are the children. And the children are going to take after their parents completely. And they're all going to be purple. Because P, P, P. P, P, P. P, P, P. P, P, P. 
P P P P P P P P. They're all gonna be capital P P's. <laughs> and so, right here, you're probably like, "Whoa, dude, what is all of that?" Well, wow, all this mumbo jumbo is actually a pretty com not complicated, pretty simple system. So P, the two double capital P's stand for the dominant purple and the parents and the kids because it's pretty easy because they're all capital P's. So there are four capital P's, so four out of four, which is equal to one. So that means 100% of the kids are going to come out purple. This is right here. Four kids will be purple, which is all of them. So that means zero of them will turn out to be any other color any of them. And that means another zero kids will turn out to be white. And so they're all 100% going to be purple. Okay, so this next problem or pundit square that we have to fill out, well, that I had to fill out, was basically like the first one, but lowercase or recessive so first as you can see yellow is dominant and that's the capital and green is recessive and that's the y so what first i did i read c and it says a father is double underscore y not underscore i don't know why just underscore double lowercase y and the mother is also lowercase double y so you get your squares here and you put lowercase y on both sides because they're both under lowercase. If they were going to be recessive or heterozygous means one would be capital and the other one would be lowercase. But they're homozygous, so they're lowercase. So then you have to fill in the chart. So lowercase y, lowercase y, both lowercase y's. Lowercase y, lowercase y, both lowercase, and lowercase, 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 lowercase. And so, and then you get to D. What colors are the parents? So as you can tell, the parents are green. The parents were to be green. And the children, the children would also be green. Or, you can't really see that, but green. As well as their parents, because both parents were green, so the seed of the color for the kids would be green. So now, to all of that little, like, mumbo-jumbo that everybody saw, let's get to it. Because that's, that's what's completing a Punnett square table. So, first what you would have to do is you would have to find out the children's results. So, the children are double Y. So, and you see how many double Y's are there. As you can tell, they're all four double Y. So you put four over four. And four over four is one. And one is 100%. So 100% are all going to be green. And then, that's how you find the children. But technically, you wouldn't be done because you still would have to label out the other ones. So then you would do... Capital Y. My capital Y's look like the dominant or the lowercase Y's. So you go zero over four, and that's zero. So you have zero percent recessive. Mm, yeah, yeah. And then you would do the heterozygous. So you'd put capital Y, lowercase Y. And as you can tell, there are zero of those two. So you put zero over four. You put zero, zero percent, and that's all. That's that's <clears throat> that's heterozygous, but that's half of half. So technically, that's recessive too. And this is going to be dominant because both of them are the same. Homozygous. This here is an example of a pedigree chart with this prompt right here. So basically, what all this is showing is that here are the parents of this daughter. And it shows 
This father had blue eyes, which is a recessive trait. And that's why it has nothing colored in. Or not even half. It's not a carrier or anything. It's blue-eyed. And then her mom was brown-eyed. So, I mean, she's going to come down here. She's a carrier of the blue eyes. But she comes out with brown eyes because brown eyes is a dominant trait over the blue eyes. But she's still a carrier. And it says that she marries a man who has brown eyes. Which, through everything, he would have to be a full brown eyed and she would be a carrier of the blue eyes. Because they have a son, which is blue eyed. And that should be a square, not a circle. I really do not. It's a square. He's a son. Squares equal boys. And circles equal girls. As I said before. Down here I am showing that the RR dominant is the brown eyes. And the R recessive is blue and rr is a carrier of the recessive trait which comes out dominant except for down here in generation three generation two the generations are generation one are the parents of these so the mom's parents and the boy's parents are generation one and they have the offspring of generation two and they have the offspring of generation three which is the son so to find all of this is kind of confusing because first what you would have to do, you would have to make it, you would have to first read this whole prompt right here, but then you would write it all out. So what I did, I read that a brown eyed woman whose father, so I put father, and then she obviously had to have a mother, so you put the mother, but they have a daughter, so you put the circle. And this is a brown-eyed woman whose father had blue eyes and mother had brown eyes. So the man had blue eyes, so he would be recessive. And the mom had brown eyes, so she would be dominant. But she would be a carrier, so she'd have half, and she'd be, yeah, she'd be heterozygous. And then it says she marries a brown-eyed man. So, brown eyed, you still don't know what he has. So, you have to get his parents in. And so, you give his parents. And then it shows that a brown eyed man whose parents are also brown eyed. So, that means they're both brown eyed. So, that means that they're all colored in. And so, and he's brown eyed. But she still carries the trait of blue eyed. No matter what. And so then. And then it reads that they have a son who is blue-eyed. So, obviously, his blue-eyed comes from here, from the dad. Because she still carries it, and she's giving it to him. So he, but he still carries the brown-eyed recessive. So he is RR, too. Well, they're all RR, but he is heterozygous. So, therefore, that's how I got that. That may not be right because I just figured something out in all in here. But to find out this, what I did, I drew a Punnett square. So Punnett square, I tried. I had to find different things because he, he could be a blue eyed too. But I found out he was. So he put R, 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 R. So R, 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 R. And while that's getting filled up, you can tell that either way, he is going to come out blue-eyed. So if he was going to come out blue-eyed, then that one would come out, well, their son would come out blue-eyed. But these were going to be brown-eyed because he is brown-eyed and it doesn't show anything. It doesn't say anything about them having blue-eyed parents. So I stated that they both had brown eyes. And they're both fully dominant brown eyes, but no carrier of the blue-eyed gene. So he'd be fully blue-eyed. But the boy the son came out is because his mother was had the blue-eyed gene in her from her father. That's how their son turned out to have blue eyes in the end. Blue. Not brown, blue.